This week, we are back to our regularly scheduled program. Sporting my new koozie from Kelly, which is Kelly Marie Hand Dyed Yarns. For those of you who didn't see my fiber share video, I'll link it up here. You should go check it out. This week's episode is brought by Larry's Latest Sour Ale from Bell's. They're located in Kalamazoo, Michigan. If you're in that area, they also have food. It's very good, I highly recommend it. Hey, what's up? What's happening? What's going on? Chevy Rell here. If you don't know who I am, like always, there'll be a little eye up here somewhere. You can check out my intro to video. Uh, this is episode five. The last couple videos have not been episode videos, so we're back to the regularly scheduled program. I will start out with what I'm wearing, which is my, I'll stand back here. It's my dirty martini sweater from Ella Torrenti. This is Miss Babs. This is such a terrible angle. Sorry. I totally have a confession to make. I was gonna record earlier, but then I had friends come over. So usually you guys get me at like one beer in and now you're getting me at three beers in. So who knows where this ride's gonna take us this evening. This color is Funny Papers. These were Miss Babs Yowza skeins. This, as well as the sleeves, which look how well that blended. Isn't that cool? This colorway is Funny Papers. And then I did the cuff and just the back here with Mineville Wool Projects Field Mouse. On one of my past episodes, I did tell you that I was worried that the band on the back would flare. And I was hoping that after I blocked it, it wouldn't, and it doesn't. It lays, it lays super nice. I love it. It's super squishy and comfortable. Now I'm ready to cast on another sweater. Let's get into FOs. The first one, I will have to insert a picture, probably here. I knit Dan the Voodoo Love Me Doll by Susan Claudino. She does awesome stuffies, they're super cute. I make Dan stuffies for his desk at work. Dan is one of those guys that when he is working, it looks like he's working, but when he leaves at the end of the night, there is nothing on his desk, except for his little entourage of things. I think in the picture that I have, the thing with all the little legs that you can't really tell what it is, that's a Yip Yip monster. And when he's like propped up on something cute, he's so cute, but I don't think that the pictures do him justice. But the Yip Yip monster is super cute. So if, if any of you know what the Yip Yip monster is from Sesame Street, It's one of my faves. And I think it was actually the first thing I ever made him for his desk. Uh, my next finished object is my sediments for my cousin. Last episode, I had this one done and I only had that much of the cuff completed. So I got the whole thing done. You guys, this pattern is great. It helps that they are made out of pashmina which is cashmere, a cashmere blend. They are super soft, but free pattern. And I've said before how much fun it is. You like knit a stitch and then bring the yarn in the front and slip five stitches, take it back, knit a stitch, bring the yarn in front, and then you knit a row. And then on the next row, you pick them up. So that's how you get these diamonds it's so fast, it's so fast. The other, the only alteration I made is in the pattern, it calls to do three. So really these should be longer, but they're for my cousin and she has really small hands, like she's petite and I didn't want them to be 
that long. So I only did two repeats. If I was making these for me, I would probably have done the third repeat because I like mine longer. The other thing that's super cool about this pattern is the thumb you is not ribbed. So it was really easy. You all you do when you get ready to pick up for the thumb is you pick up the stitches, you pick up four stitches and then knit six rows and cast off. There's no like fiddly ribbing. You just knit and cast off. They are so easy. I think I'm gonna make myself a pair. So I highly suggest this pattern. Other finished objects. I got two squares done. This is one of them, which I don't know if there's a front and a back. I guess not on crochet, huh? So there's one square. They're not blocked, so they look crappy. Usually I show them to you blocked. And here's another square. So two's better than none, huh? And I don't know what number I'm on, 11, 12, 13. I think that might be 13. And that's it for my finished objects. So now we're on to whips. As far as whips go, I'm still working on my crocheted squares, so I have one started, but not enough to show you. My brainless socks, if any of you follow Simply Socks Yarn Company, Allison is the owner, and she's in my knitting group, and we all went to out for sushi last Sunday, so there was like a whole big old table of knitters. She posted a picture. This is what I worked on, and that's how much I got done. The the main thing that I'll tell you about these, and this pattern is a free pattern, so I'm not giving anything away, but they, the pattern calls to do the cuff, which is what I'm on, I don't know if you can tell that. The pattern calls to do the cuff as a twisted rib, and I was talking to the girls while I was doing it, and I felt like twisted rib was gonna be really tight, and they said, yes, it'll be tight. It's mainly just to look pretty. And I was like, yeah, I don't care about it looking pretty. I want it to be comfortable. So in typical Chevis fashion, because I don't give a shit. I knit, and I don't know if you can, yeah, maybe you can. See this line right there? I just switched to regular rib. I'm not twisting it. So there's that, there's that many rows that are twisted and I don't give a hoot. I want it to be comfortable. I want it to be stretchy and nice and so we're just doing regular rib. Then of course, I don't know if you can tell, I should put them on stitch blockers. If you've seen them in my past episodes, you already know. But there's a cable that runs up the side. I am still doing that cable. So, and that'll go all the way up. So, there's that. My Oracle shawl, I did work quite a bit on that, but because there's over 1,100 stitches on the needles at this point, you can't really tell. So what I did is I finished the brioche, which was, I wanna say three or four rows, and then I did the two setup rows for the next lace pattern, and now I'm on the first row of the next lace pattern. So I'd show you, but you can't really see it. I'll show you once I get some progress done on the lace. Which, later you'll hear, maybe I will be getting some more product, which I will, you'll find out later, no, what I want to say. Oh my God, I can't talk. I'm blaming the beer. This is also dinner, which is probably a terrible thing to admit to especially to the internet. <laughs> it's not the worst thing I've ever done. I also remember a time where I ate milk duds for breakfast, which isn't that as bad as having beer for dinner? Do you think about the same? Milk duds for breakfast, beer for dinner. Mm. Anyway, what was I talking about? Now I don't even remember. This is what happens, see? <laughs> This is terrible. Maybe I shouldn't podcast right now. The Oracle Shawl. I will show you hopefully some progress on that next episode because I will have a lot of car time coming up, which you'll hear about in a few minutes. 
my last whip is I finally started my Wanderer Mucklucks, Modern, Modern, Modern Mucklucks by Andrea Mowry. I am using the Harrisburg Designs Highland Worsted. I want to send a special shout out to Tommy from Squirrel Pie if you watch her podcast. She's the one who turned me on to this yarn and it is so sheepy and wonderful and awesome and squishy and I cannot wait to have these done. For those of you who do color work, as, at least as far as I've gotten, it is a paid for pattern so I won't, I think I'm allowed to say this. I, I think I'm allowed to say this. I'm not telling you how to do it. But typically in Fair Isle knitting, or this isn't Fair Isle, color work knitting, you should pick up, if, if, you, if your floats are going to be, good grief. In color work knitting, they suggest that if your floats are longer than I think four or five stitches, that you should pick them up or catch them, which I still haven't watched Sockmetician's video, which I said in a past episode I was going to do. I do have it favorited. I do wanna watch it. I was planning on watching it for this. However, there's only one spot in this chart that you have to do that with. So I'll get to it. For right now, I'm just picking them up. I'm catching the flows how I've always caught them nothing fancy. For those of you who have never done color work, um, you'll knit with one color and then knit with the other color. Well, if it's longer than four or five stitches, you twist the yarn and continue knitting with that same color. So it catch it, which, and I don't even have a good example. Here's my floats. So if the floats are, are longer than that, you would twist it to catch those. That probably makes no sense to you whatsoever. YouTube it, there's a bazillion videos on it, I promise. In this particular pattern, there's only one row in the chart that is longer than five stitches, or it might be five stitches, I don't know, somewhere in there that you have to actually catch your float. So. It's super easy, it's going fast. I've just been working on multiple things, so this is all the longer I've gotten. And I was doing it during the Olympics, so I was watching the Olympics and knitting these. I'm so excited about them, they're so squishy and awesome. This yarn, okay, so knitting these, once I finish these and I wear them, I'm probably gonna buy a sweater's quantity. As of right now, just knitting with this yarn, and feeling the squishiness of it, I feel like I want a sweater's quantity. My friend Diana just knit a weekender out of, shit, what was that? I wanna say peace fleece and that's not right. I'll find out, I'll enter it here somewhere. It's whatever she used, it's super sheepy and awesome and it blooms when you, we were, we were talking about that at sushi too. The yarn that blooms when you, <laughs> when you flock it. But it's one of those yarns that is super sheepy and it gets softer once you wash it, which I'm super excited to see what these turn into. And when I say wash, I mean block. This is not super wash. These would felt to like elf slippers if I agitated them. So I will not be doing that. I definitely feel like I want a sweater out of this squishy, sheepy goodness. So that might be happening in the future. Enabling, we're up to enabling. Okay, in one of my past episodes, I said that I felt like as a podcaster, I should not enter giveaways and things. When I said that, I had already entered in a giveaway for Knit Style and I won. Actually, some of you may be here because of that giveaway, because she mentioned that I had a podcast, so some of you may have come from there. If you did, hi, nice to meet you, I'm Chevis. Chevirel. 
So I got my skein of yarn from her. I didn't know what I was gonna get. It was gonna be a surprise. Look at that. It reminds me of a robin. It's blues and browns and orange. It, like it reminds me of a robin. What did she name it? Colorways Jamie. So I think that this is her Jamie Lannister maybe. I know that she did a bunch of colorways for Game of Thrones, which I am a Game of Thrones lover. I read all the books and have watched all the shows. So that's pretty cool. But it's definitely very much a robin. Did you guys ever stamp robins when you were little? When I was little, my grandma said the first robin that you see in spring, so y'all remember this if you've never done it, you're supposed to stamp a robin for luck. So in the spring, at the first robin you see, you stamp it, you go, and that's stamping your robin, and it brings you luck. So I've done it <laughs> my, my entire life, like even as an adult. The first robin I see, I still stamp it. Whether it brings me luck or not, I have no idea, but this skein reminds me of that. So that's that's pretty cool. Even though it's Jamie Lannister, Jamie Lannister is cool too. But the super cool thing about this, it's her posh sock base MCN. So there's 10% cashmere in this, you guys. Like, I just wanna pet it. It's awesome. So that was a cool win. Regarding signing up, for giveaways. When I mentioned that, I got a lot of feedback from you guys saying that they see podcasters sign up for giveaways all the time and they do cals and things. And the more I thought about it, it really is something that I love about the knitting community. And just because I have a podcast, like, why should I miss out on it? So I made up my mind I am gonna do cals and I am gonna enter giveaways. Do what makes you happy. You only live once. Be a ray of fucking sunshine. My next enabling, fiber share. You've heard me talk about it. I had a fiber share video of what I sent to my person, my partner, and what my partner sent to me. So I won't go over everything, but I will just mention again, you guys, this is the yarn that I got. And then she sent me like a bazillion other goodies along with it. This colorway, it's by Kelly Marie Hand Dyed Yarn. She's Kelly Marie Yarns on Instagram. Ugh. The coolest thing about this. Well, not the coolest thing. The yarn is the coolest thing. I mean, these colors, hello. Anyway. Dude. The lighting sucks, I'm sorry. She named a colorway after me, you guys. I have a colorway named after me. And this yarn is flipping amazing. It's gray and purple and pink, and there's little black flecks in there. She has an Etsy shop. The fiber content is 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. 463 yards, so it's an awesome size skein, and she's selling them currently in her shop. She has a bunch of other cool colorways too, but the Chevy Rail colorway, you know, how can I not be partial to it? She also sent me some minis, which, aren't they cute? They're so cute. I'm not doing, like, I'm not any good at this, am I? Vienna, Vienna White, Vienna White. This does not have a colorway, but it is also 7525. So I will definitely get some good use out of there. So that's my enabling. She, I also got a bunch of other things. If you wanna see those things that are awesome, go watch that video. Show and tell is next. My Aunt Karen, who is actually my great Aunt Karen. I don't call her great Aunt Karen. She's my Aunt Karen, always has been. She's awesome and I love her. She's my grandma's sister. So we don't, you know, spend holidays together or buy Christmas and birthday gifts or any anything like that. Like I see her at the reunions and it 
funerals and birthday parties. So I go to my cousin Dorothy's birthday party. She just turned 50. Happy belated Dorothy, even though she doesn't watch this. But it was so much fun. I get there. Aunt Karen's there. It was a super surprise because, you know, it was like a party party. Like we were drinking and stuff. And yeah. So Aunt Karen's there. And she's like, Chevis, I have something for you. I brought it. I was like, what? You what do you mean you have something for me? Like walk over to her purse. She digs this out of her purse, you guys. It is a rug hook for, or a hook. Is that what it's called? It's for rug hooking. She has written NS on it. It didn't come that way, which I think is so sweet. I'm totally floored that she did this. They went to Canada. I don't even know when she went, but they went to Canada. I don't even know who they are. Aunt Karen went to Canada with someone, friends or something, and they went to Nova Scotia. Well, when they were in Nova Scotia, let me hold on, I have a thing. When they were in Nova Scotia, they went on this tour and I, I can't even, I can't even pronounce it, but here's the thing. Sorry for the lighting. Okay, Masterpiece Tapestries, I, I think is how it comes up. I'll put all the links to everything in the show notes. But there's the, the little building thing. It is a museum and gallery. I, I've never heard of it. I had no idea. I went and researched it. It's awesome. It was so sweet because she thought I, she knew I did stuff with yarn and fiber and she just thought I'd rug hooked, which I never have. But Mama Jean, my stepmom, who's doing the quilt, she rug hooks. So I know like she goes to Goodwill and gets all the wool and, you know, like cuts it with the thingy for any of you who rug hook. And I have always wanted to try it with yarn because Andre Sue Knits, for all of you who watch her, she's recently gotten into it and she makes beautiful pieces of art. I mean, they're gorgeous. But I, you know, it's one of those things like, oh yeah, I'd like to try it. Cause you know me, I wanna do all the things. I watched all Andre Sue's um, Andy I watched all of her videos on how you do it, what type of hook to buy, all those things. It was just sort of a fleeting thought, you know, that'd be cool. So when Aunt Karen busts out this cute little rug hook, I was like, oh, thank you so much. That's so cool. I did some research. Come to find out, as far as this museum goes, there's this gal. Her name's Elizabeth Lafort. No. Yes, Elizabeth Lafort. In, I might have to address my notes because I'm going off memory here. In 1926, at the age of 12 years old, she stopped going to school to go home and all of this information is on the website that I will link. Uh, went home to, you know, do what they did back then, like keep up the house. She started rug hooking rugs rug hooking rugs is that what you say because it's not latch hooking she started hooking rugs and her sisters had done it it was all normal right like that that's just what she did back then fast forward to 1940 she received a postcard which i'm not i'm not gonna remember was from someplace across the pond and it was this really pretty scene which i can't remember i want to say it was like a lake with some ducks or something I don't know, read the story. But she gets this card, she loves the scene, and she says, I, I can hook that picture into a rug. Well, that started her off. You guys, she does huge tapestries. Her work is in, and I don't know, maybe I live under a rock and all of you guys know this already. I did not, it was news to me, so I was kind of excited about it. Her work is in the White House, it's in the Vatican, it's at this gallery, she has her own museum, it's in Buckingham Palace, she did all the presidents, 
I mean, her work is amazing. I would love to see it in person. So the fact there's a video on YouTube, I'll also link it showing you like it's, it's all on her. Not only did she hook these, she dyed her own wool for them. She dyed her own colors and everything. Like she's awesome. So if you guys are ever in Nova Scotia, I suggest that you check this out. I would love to check it out one day. Thank you so, so much to Aunt Karen for getting me this because it basically pushed me to learn how to do it. Now, that being said, yeah, we're good at things and we're not good at things and I might not be good at this. Whoops, I'm doing it. Okay, well again, the lighting's bad. So this is a sheep. I don't know if you can tell that. And then this is blue. It's like ribbon yarn. And then I'm going to find some green for grass. I don't know. Well, let me just tell you. I thought that maybe it would just, it was just taking me a while to like get into the groove. But I feel like I'm doing something wrong because it's supposed to be fun and it's fighting me. Now, I will tell you, whatever this, whatever this fabric is, it was just something I had in my stash that, you know, the weave was wide enough that I figured I could poke that hook through. It is working, but when you poke this little hook through, let me see if you can, it catches on, it just hurt. I can't even explain it. It catches, it fights me. I'm definitely going to finish it. I think I'm going to give it to Aunt Karen. If it even looks like a sheep, like I'm hoping by the time I'm done with it, you'll be able to tell what it is. For all you hookers out there. For all you hookers out there. Maybe you can help me. I was going to ask Mama Jean what she thought too. Now, Mama Jean does not hook with yarn. She hooks with wool. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe the fabric that I'm hooking into is part of it. Maybe the size of the hook is part of it because that is a very small hook. I, I can only do it for a little bit before my hand starts cramping. But I will tell you... It is addicting and I want to keep doing it. I wish that I could keep going. The only reason I stop is because my hand cramps up. Hopefully you guys will see that as a finished object at some point in time. We'll see. Thank you to my Aunt Karen. That was an awesome surprise and I love learning new things. This weekend is my birthday. We are going down to Indianapolis and staying a couple nights in a hotel for a weekend away. We're getting a couple's massage and we're going out to a really nice dinner. I'm super excited about it. So that's just all I thought we were doing. Cruising through Instagram yesterday, I saw a post of this really cool yarn. It's Susan underscore M-A-K-S. M-A-K. It'll be in the description. You know, just a fibery person that I follow. I had no idea who she was. I, she just had fiber stuff and I liked her pictures. A little while back, she posted something in Indianapolis on March 10th. They are having a button show, like a button competition, like, like buttons. A couple of friends and I are going down for that. Same gal posted this cool yarn. I was like, that's awesome. And I just happened to notice uh, Mass Ave as her location. And I was like, Mass Ave, there's a Mass Ave in, uh... it said Mass Ave Knits. And I was like, there's a Mass Ave in Indianapolis. I wonder if it's the same one. I look and it, it is. And that's when I put it together that she was also the same one that posted the thing about the buttons. Well, I've never been to Mass Ave Knits. I commented on the picture and I said, oh my gosh, you know, uh, indie birthday weekend, T minus four days. We'll have to add this to the list. And she said, the yarn crawl starts on Friday. It's a great weekend to be here. The yarn dyer and artist is gonna be in the shop on Saturday. 
What? A yarn crawl of all the weekends that I'm going down to Indianapolis? And there's a freaking yarn crawl? Are you serious? Like, the yarn gods are looking out. I'm just saying. Then, of course, I'm on research mode. So I've researched. It's called Roving Indiana. It started in, I'm going to mess it up, 2013, maybe? 2015? 2013. I don't know. Check out. It'll be linked. Susan is the owner of Mass Ave Knits, and she is one of the original gals who started this yarn crawl. I immediately started my list of all the yarn shops that I'm going to hit on this yarn crawl. Of course, you guys know Dan from other videos. He's super awesome and loves a mission as much as I do. So we're gonna hit some on the way down and then some on the way back when we're coming home on Monday. Hopefully I'll get some videos and buy pretty things and all of that. Let me tell you the stores that I am going to hit just in case y'all are in that area and want to know. This is not all of the stores on the Yarn Crawl. There are some that are farther east, further west, and further south. Since we're coming from the north, I'm just, we're just going to hit the ones on our way down and back up. Um, we'll be hitting Always in Stitches and the Black Sheep Yarn. I believe I could be misspeaking. I believe both of them are in Noblesville. Two of these are in Noblesville. Um, but Always in Stitches, the Black Sheep Yarn, Village Yarn Company, Broad Ripple Knits, which is the only one out of these stores that I have been to in the past, and Mass Ave. Hopefully, I'll get some footage or something for you guys to look at. I don't know. Maybe there'll be some cool stuff there. If for some reason you guys are there at the same time I am, say hi. Well, I looked up on their website what all that meant. To be honest with you, I've never been on a yarn crawl before. I've been to quite a few fiber festivals. I've, I've been to a lot of fiber festivals. I've never been on a yarn crawl though before. The way this particular yarn crawl is set up, I don't know if all yarn crawls are that way, you can buy a passport. It's $7.50. You get 10% off yarn. And there's an ability to sign up for prizes and things, but then there's some other like, voucher thing that you stamp that I think that does the prizes. I think just, I think the passport, the $7.50 passport just gets you a discount off the yarn. I, I don't know. I'm going to ask when I get there because I guess it would depend on how much yarn you're buying as to whether it would be worth buying the passport or not. If the voucher still allows you to sign up for prizes. I don't know. Like I said, I've never done it. I'm going to have to, I'll talk to the people when I get there and ask them what they think. One of the things that I did today, I looked at all of my patterns and then I came home and played in my yarn, like my own personal little yarn store. I tried to figure out what route I want to take as far as my purchases. So let me show you. I have the Reaching Vines hat, which I can't remember. I'm a bad podcaster because I don't remember which one of these were free and which ones I've purchased. The Reaching Vines hat is super cool looking though and it takes 200 to 220 yards of worsted so I'm going to keep an eye out for something for that. The Creative Obsession podcast. Carrie, one of my girls out on the West Coast. Check out her podcast if you don't already watch it. She is currently knitting. This is a paid for pattern, but I don't think there's anything on the front page that get, yeah, there isn't anything on the front page that gives it away. The Counterbalance Mitts by Stephanie Lotvin. Look at that. Okay. I don't know why, but seeing this is cool. But seeing what Carrie knit up and like actually on her hand, dude, it is super cool. I can't wait to knit them. That's a DK weight yarn. So I'm just gonna, you know, keep an eye out for a pretty cool skein of DK. Of course, from my fiber share, my underwing mitts. Now I did assess the stash. I have the orange or close to the orange. 
So I'll just need the black and the cream color, which that'll be really easy to find. So then this is a paid for pattern by Julie Hoover that I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. I'm not even good, I'm not good at that. Like, Vine, Kristen, she, she has like this wonderful accent and she says all these cool words. Like, I'm not even gonna pretend to be something I'm not. I, I, I have no idea how you say that word. It is an oversized, it's meant to have like two and a half to four and a half inches positive ease. It has a big, I'm gonna try not to show things because it's paid for. It has a big turtleneck, like a big floppy turtleneck. So I'm picturing this with like jeans, this big oversized sweater, I'm super excited about it. And I love this like, I don't know, what do you call that, a drop sleeve? I don't even know, but I love that seam down the sleeve. This is worsted weight yarn. So I'll be looking for uh, some yarn for that. I believe this is a free free pattern, getting warmer. Lots of podcasters have talked about this. This is 300 and some yards of bulky. It's getting warmer I've wanted for a while. That's the yarn that I'm going to kind of keep my eye out for. It is two hours down to Indy. Plus we're gonna be stopping and things. So I'm going to get a lot of knitting done in the vehicle. I'm hoping that I will put a pretty good dent in the Oracle because even though I want to knit on the, the Wanders, the modern mucklucks really bad, car riding is perfect to work on the lace for my Oracle. Dan and I listen to books a lot together or podcasts and that's a perfect time to do that. I would really like to get that off the needles. I'm to the point where I wanna cast on all the things and while I like to have multiple things on the needles, I don't like to have that many things on the needles. Like I can handle a little bit of chaos, but if I have too much chaos, I start like, flailing and it's not good. So hopefully I'll get that done. There's one more pattern I forgot. I knew that there was something I was forgetting. This is the big one. Okay, what is it? Oh, found it. Y'all remember the Do You Love Me shawl was everywhere for a while. Everybody was doing it. Suzanne Sommer was like, the brioche queen is the brioche, well, not, I, don't, I don't know if she's the brioche queen, but it seems she does awesome brioche patterns. All of her patterns are awesome. I had a moment of weakness <laughs> and I think I bought like four or five of her patterns. Like I was just like, ah, screw it, I want them all. So I did. I am going to do the P-Rex. For those of you who don't know what the P-Rex is, here again, I don't think I'm giving anything away by showing you this. This is brioche, a two color brioche. Uh, again, I'll have it linked. Super cool looking construction. You can not only wear it open front, you can wear it open back. I love this, this peekaboo thing going on. That being said, I dug through my stash. I, I wanted to check out all these patterns to see what I had that would potentially work in my stash versus, like I wanted to see what I had to buy all of or if I had anything in my stash that would work for these already. For the P-Rex, it calls for a heavy fingering weight yarn. I have the Mineville Wool Project Super Sock in Constellation. Now this is not gonna do this color justice. Wow, you really can't see it. Let me take it out of the out of the hank and see if you can see it better. This is mostly like a tonal gray, but then there are big blocks of teal, gosh, that color looks terrible. That's teal, it looks black, but see now that looks black. I don't know, maybe that is black, but it's mostly big chunks of like a teal color. I have four skeins of it. That would be my main color. I just need to find a color 
to go with it. And I am thinking, I don't know, I could be way off. I'm going to take a skein of this with me. I'm, I'm thinking since it's a two color brioche, a light color would be cool. Like a real light, like this light, see how that almost looks silver? In, in real life, it doesn't look like that. Like that's the light reflecting. It is not, it's way more gray. Like that, that almost looks white. It is, it is a true gray in the real world. I think it would be really cool with a white. Well, look, look at this. There it looks better. Like this is more of a cream. I'll just move on to this skein. I have been super in love lately with these really light color skeins with splotches of color in them. This is a light cream, uh, like a blush pink that has like a burgundy speckle in it. I'm gonna take this skein with me to find some other colors that can go with this. Uh, Jacqueline Salem from the Brooklyn Knit Folk podcast is, I think it's a What the Fade. She's knitting a What the Fade right now. All of her colors are this, this light color with some splotches of other color that she's faded. It's one of those things that I don't feel like Instagram or her podcast like video can do it justice. Like I would love to see it in person. Not that that'll ever happen, but you know, maybe one day. I have in my head how it might look. So I wanna take this skein and see if I can find some other skeins to go with it and maybe I can do something similar. That's my plan for the yarn crawl. Stay tuned on the happenings of that. I will report at a later date. One last thing real quick. I want to give a shout out to a new podcast I found. It's called Sal and Al, The Wool Slayers. They are awesome. They are those people that I feel like I want to be friends with in real life. I think that they would be a lot of fun. They are Texas girls. For a change, I've gone south instead of west. In their last episode, they were talking about going to uh, D DFW, I think is one of their big fiber festivals down there. D I want to say, D I used to work at United Airlines, so DFW to me is the airport, which is Dallas-Fort Worth. DFW, DF, huh. Anyway. It'll be linked. They know like Diana from Suburban Stitcher, who I love. I've watched her podcast for a long time. She's also a Texas girl. And it's just so fun to hear other podcasters talk about other podcasters that they know because they're in that area. For me, it would be Amy Beth. She, the fat squirrel, is in Indy. Uh, I met her once many years ago and she probably has no idea who I am, but of course I know her because I watch her podcast. But she's in Indy, so we're close. Close, and I would not have known that wool slayers were down there unless they'd mentioned Diana, like, or Diane, excuse me. So it, it's just cool what a small world we live in, like Carrie from Creative Obsession, no Michelle and Leslie from the Naughty Knitwits. It's just super cool how small our world is. I love this community so much. I want to thank you guys for spending time with me. I really enjoy doing the podcast, mainly because I like connecting with other fiber people who love the same things that I love. I hope you guys enjoy it. I, I know that I like seeing other podcasters stuff and I hope you like seeing mine, I don't know. Especially when people live like out in the country or away from uh, places that have big fiber communities, some people, and I don't think all people realize it, but some people, the only access they have to the fiber community is through podcasts. I just really want you guys to know that so far, even though I'm on, what is this, episode five, it's been a lot of fun and I appreciate all the feedback that I'm getting and I hope that you guys are enjoying 
all the shit I'm spewing. <laughs> so, um, that being said, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Give it a thumbs up. That pushes me up so other people can find me. And uh, other than that, until next time, catch you later. Bye.